Welcome back, Mr. Jalla. Sero uh, Bismillah. I hope you are now able to proceed with your testimony. I am. Uh, Mr. Jalla, I am. I am. And should you need another break, just let us know. And we all understand that it is really difficult to relieve uh, all this traumatic event. Uh, and, uh, you know, should you need to stop, just let us know. Would you give you, before the break, you were giving us the description of the first body that you came across? That Kindly give us a description. Uh, thank you, Council. Um, the first body that we saw was half naked. The head was broken. Badly. Ah. From what you saw, was it by a sharp object or a blunt object? Uh, it is a heavy object, I would rather put it. Uh, as an investigator, I noticed that the head was broken. And blood was oozing from the mouth and from the ears. That was the first body. Did it look to you that the killing was done at the site where you found the body? Or did it appear that the killing was done elsewhere and the scene there was just a dumping place? As an investigator, my opinion was that uh, the assault was done on the scene. That was the very crime scene. That's what else did you see? You saw the first body. After the I head was broken. Blood coming from the mouth and, and, uh, and the ears. But perhaps to answer this question first. When you got there, was blood still oozing out? Or, or you, all you just saw was that there was blood and it did come out from, from those outfits. Um, blood has already come out. It was even in beginning to dry. Based on your experience, would you say that this was a killing of three, four hours, or was it more like six, seven hours? Uh, the second body that we saw was In my experience, Najeroto, the killing could have taken place within four hours by the time we arrived there. As a Kenoko Faro Keta Montoro Wati Nani le commento Janintolo Futalaji. That is, it must have happened during the day. It must have happened so, in the early hours of the morning, maybe around 6 
to 6:30 munta akata somanda juno le mosa fo tala woro kata tala woro nin tala kan because um, the assailants the assailants were in a hurry to leave the scene that wo far la lu men yo baro ke be hawjarin ne pour ko bo dinkirato if they had gotten the opportunity they could have disposed of those bodies but because it's becoming daylight so they have to abandon the bodies ni ya nya soton nun be la fila men na wolem ka nyim furewlu sare wala ke yemandi bar bitum wayri wotum mo fano be ke kan e malla fi moli e taraje e nyamoto botaji so proceed with what else you saw te dan ya fo mole ni abota wala yemuna je fatan ko ne so after discovering the first body i called the cameraman biringa fure folo je nganata la kumandi i told him to take two shots ngai natal fulata you took two shots ay natal fulota i turned again further down ngai bitungo tu mole nyele mata pour kata nyato do mandi i saw an other body na fure do fananje in similar condition o fanambe o nyakili mo nyalema then i called the cameraman nga natal la kumandi i say take two take two shots ngai ay nyim fanan ayo fanan natal natal fula you, you said in similar condition Yes. Oh, iko nya kilo nya. Break down for that. Could you break that down for us, please? Of of faram fatan nya nya ko doba. Yes, cancel. Ha, ah, cancel. Um that one also the skull was broken. O fanang akun kolo be tearing. And you can even see the brain falling off. Isi akun kan o fango je no kono to. Life. And uh, blood was also oozing. And o fanang yellow bota from the mouth, adala and the ears. Ana tulolo. So we I asked the cameraman to take two shots. Go camera and go natal lie natal fulata which he did. O fana ye oke. We look for again. Was it also half naked? O fana vo ala dum fe ngol nyim fana mangé dum fe tim mari ngol men baba lo bala ba. He was half naked kan so. A wo fana a fankilim ma bala ken se ngolom. So we move further again. Ta ta nyato. We saw an other body. A fure do fana nje. I called the cameraman. Na natal la kumandi. He took uh, other two shots. O fana ye ay natal fulake o to fana. These bodies were the their limbs free or were they tied eh ila nyim fure wol nyim i fo i bulol nyim i be sitiri nda bam fo e be e be fayen ne may bulol sitiri kan sun de wa not tight i mandara sitiri de wa not tight i bulol mandara sitiri ya hands we are loose i bulol be friendin ne so we counted up to three bodies na kasabiro ke fofure saba then we went further down the forest ntata ten ten kata nyato do man de ngulo kono we found an other one na fure do fananje an other one na do fananje an other one na do fananje until we counted eight bodies an fo nga fure say kan konti so the cameraman where are they all men they were all men kelle sorry they were all men kan so e be mu kelle ti kan sul so when we counted about eight bodies ri na nyim fure say yo konti the cameraman took all the photo shots am na ta lay ni na ta lolu beke I came back on the highway. Muruta nan kanam beddi bakan. I was traumatized. E katwa katam fana yekki jate woleti. I was confused. Ketanye jakaloti. I don't know what to do. Malo mbe menkela. As the chief crime investigator. Memmu kurun ku kurumulu kiskisir la nyaton koti. Of the Gambia Police Force. Gambia la police bunda bala. I was terrified. E aketanye ki jate woti. So I left the bodies where they were lying. Na fure wolu tulwarin e belarin dame. Nothing like this has ever happened in this country before. Wo membe ko nyi nyo anana manke nyi bankun kam. It has never happened council. Anana manke jang council. I left the bodies lying down there. I flew to Laring in Wonoto, you know, in Wonoto je. I came on the highway. Not am beddi bakan. I was standing. Meloring. Meditating. Be mira kan. What must have happened? Mune keta. So, within a short time according, what, according to your experience. In Londo to men je ite Londo men soro. Were these bodies washed ashore as you previously thought? fo e mem mira nu ka foko asike no kulungula yele ma defe jiogo no jio e fayna fo keta wolti ba kansul never kansul won nenen te nyinti what did you believe happened e jilata ko mune keta wodo kansul i believe it was a massacre kansul lata la ko nyin keta e mo fa nya jawoleti inside the forest wulo ko no not if very far away from the beach me ya lo nga jam fata bada la le fang because my first thought was that to namiral flow moment nu e boat might have capsized asike no kulungu le boy ta ba ko no but when i arrived the scene a brim futa ta dinkira nyinto it was a total massacre nyin keta mo nya mo jama faleti proceed please ten ten while you were on the main road while i was on the main road wato membelo ring silaba kan this 
went around 2:30 me sorry after 2 to 3 insike kabo montro wati fula kata wati sabokan the igp came police la kunto ko nata usman sonko usman sonko he came in gpf1 that was ah. the the number plate of the the the, 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 the police ig at the police kunton ko ya moto men dia la gpf1 ani o moto fangole nata he found me standing i enter a loring call me ay en commandi ayalo konya pa jalo c'est ça kay ça c'est comme here konya nanang i went towards the vehicle ndata la moto bala like he was coming from the um uh, from 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 the uh, senegambe end towards this side towards tangi area munta to be bokan nan senegambia ma fangol la ay tilin kata silo la kata men kata tangi ma that's where he found me ay entara jeli did he see the bodies before he had a conversation with you janni ngata be ni be kuma falina nyote ma fo ay furewol jele ba no control ani did he ask to see them fo ay kanin ro kele ba pour ka furewol jeba no control ani did he enter into the forest to see the what you describe as a crime scene o adun day forest o nyi ngona la bam pour ka furewol jeba ko ya fo nyaame ndo ko we far nya jawla keta nyi mol la ba no control ani control what did he say to you ay muna fo ye when he called me ryan kumandi he said what do you think ay nyi nka ite muna mira i said sir nka e sa this is foul play nyi muti limbal yalti it's foul play limbal yalo nyi but like sometimes uh, in the police we use some jargons mm -hmm. you know, police to, to modo lu nka kalimo do lu fo just to describe events pour kolu la nyambe o banke la nyambe foul play wala nan kay nyi muti limbal yalti and what did you mean by that in police jargon police la kuma kan si falto o iti law ko to muneti what i meant in saying it was a foul play na kuma ko to muneti ka foko ni mutili mbal yaleti the killings were illegal nim faro lu wati nyaleti it was barbaric andu amunta mo hadama di lombal yalem it was heinous andu ala jawya se mo warta bak unacceptable andu mo manyan na sonala so that's what i meant by it was foul play wo nakuma ko to mo wala nan ko ni mutili mbal yal that's what i told the ig no le fo ig then he left abota ji how did he react mo ne kata la tele ma ma nyaati warando ala jabir nyaati i didn't notice any reaction on his face to be honest at that very moment atil to nya to nya anyada mam fen cross yo de o noto o tembo you said you were traumatized iko kula mi alon ko ay ki jotay le did he did he look affected by it fo ada fanan ila ila cross do ata to fo ya jela ada fanan ko ni aya male bang i didn't notice that in him ma cross ya ata to when i just spoke to him rin dia mutaye i said this is foul play rin ko ay ni mutili mbal yaleti i repeated that about three times no for for sinya saba then he left utumo la te botaje did he in suggest to you that he was really interested in knowing what happened fo ay ay tandi la ban warono faya fo ni to nya to nya nyi ko ya sula le pour ka long mu nek fon fon kan keta not at all cancel o manke frank cancel did he look indifferent fo ala ila korosi do ate do fo ala 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 halo nyi afali ndale ba Well after he left uh, did, did he look indifferent um cool falin de fele bang it was difficult to say because knowing the form ig usman sonko ba kula yala le pour kaw fo kadro nimme yew ig follow lon nun usman sonko he talks less la diamo bu kasia he talks less la diabo bu kasia de he doesn't talk much abu ka jama fo so he just kept quiet ay de le drong and left the scene abu ta je without even attempting to see uh, what was in the forest amani hani amasula fang amay sim fa da fang ta pour ka long mune be forest woni ngono exactly cancel kata wonya le cancel then when he left bra bota je i was still standing melorin won noto i remember the former minister of interior babukar jata makilo ba ka menne na kata minister ti memarta banko kan kunya la babu karjata he also arrived fanam futata ji in his official vehicle anin ala do kura moto because he knew me very well that to ayel lom ba kele so he called my name ay en commandin tole la he said are you are under investigations akonye fo hanim bi be kisi kisi ro nyin na kan i said yes sir honorable nka ha honorable but he also didn't come down bara manji ala moto kono i was standing there debelorin noto 
Then after 15 minutes, atata four minutes tani lulu. I didn't go back to the scene. Mamuru katao dinkira tode. The former IGP. Menne ne kete IGP tinu. Landing badge 13. Landing badge kafame 13 badge. Was coming from the other side. Wobe boka na karadola. From the Tanje area. Be boka na Tanje ma fangola. Then he had. Um, he had been sacked, I think, and detained, then released after two weeks or one week. We had a ya mutale nun komanto, ya baidu kuala hanfo, ya mutaya sindi dinkira kilinto, in a tabula. Usman Sonko uh, took over from him. Usman Sonko palaso ta atelebulu. So he also found me on the same spot. At a fana yentara lori wo dinkira kilimuleto. He stopped his vehicle. I alamoto londi. He called me. I am commanding. Because I am more comfortable with, with Tatin Baji. That Tatin Baji Natale la Kulu Sono Yata Nyofe. He been an original police officer. At a dum police old Kabrin Juna. So we know each other too well. Nanyolom Bakele Fana. So he called me. I am commanding. He said Pajalo come here. Akonya Pajalo na. I stepped about five steps because it was just um, on the way on the highway. Nasim Falulu Nyoneta Katu Silaba Fangokanem. Then he whispered to me. And do to more them I do kutu I do kutu kutanye. He said, "Be careful of this case." Akonye si hakilo tu nyinkuoto. I said, "All right, sir." Nkai, all right, sir. Then he at that stage did he know what had happened? What on the TV? I don't know, but member Kerimba. I believe he must have had the information. Lata lako asekeno ay kibaro nyimwei. Because Tatin was a very sociable person. That Tatin mumole ti mending mulo la hadama ya kono fanuta. He was a household name. Ala ala kula banga na atake moti mento bota. Even his when became when he became IGP. Ringa na atake police la nyato ngo fanuti. We still call him Tatin Baji because of his his regimental number. Mulo continue taka kumandi Tatin Baji la mema la police doko la yirika ni maro nyinti. So he has a good network. Then he left. Why do you think he was cautioning you? Well, I have no doubt in my mind that Tatin believed that the state was behind this massacre. Because he had a lot of connections within the police, police kono, and of course the NIA. Ning NIA kono. Because he was one time redeployed from the police and he was redeployed to the NIA. Yeah, Samba NIA. So he really has a good connection. And then what happened after that? So when that happened, Council, uh, I saw one journalist he was working with the Daily Observer. And in Kibar Kaito le Kadu Koke Kafume Daily Observer. Called Lamin Cham. Kafai Lamin Cham. So we were talking. Nabe I said, I don't know, we should move these bodies immediately to the mutuary. I think Lamin Cham made some calls, if I remember well. Manina, Lamin Cham, you command your Ludo Luke. At the Burfoot Health Center, so the ambulance was uh, dispatched. So the ambulance came. So the ambulance came. We lifted this body. Myself. Uh, I think Parfai was there. With some PIU officers. We were able to put about five bodies in the ambulance. Then there were three other bodies. They couldn't fit in the ambulance. We put them on the PIU pickup. So I told them, let's drive to Banjul. We drove direct to Banjul. We arrived Banjul around 7.15 or something like that. I went to the accident and emergency. I informed the officer, health officer on duty or doctor. That we have got some dead bodies that we want to put in the mortuary. So he gave the green light. Asanta. The vehicles went back um, to Gamtel on the Gamtel Road, the Telegraph Road. Motor Murota kata Gamtel ma fanga la Telegraph Road fre mortuary. Fre bungo bedameng. The mortuary was open. We took all these bodies and put them on the on the tables inside the mortuary. So whilst there, I started to search 
their persons. I put my hands into their pockets. Into the first person, I found some foreign currency. It was about 100 and something um, uh, euros. So I removed that from his pocket and put it on, on his body. I searched the other person. I found about 80 to 90 dollars. And, and I put that money also on his body. So virtually, uh, kenyaming, all the deceased persons be had some foreign currencies on them. Be kodo soto kodo soto but since we don't know their names, but long, I had a notepad. So I labeled them as number one. No, no, number two, uh, number one, we found about eighty or ninety dollars. I did that. Even some safer were found on one of the bodies. So when was it dollars or euros? There are so when that happened, uh, since I labeled them as number one, two, three, up to eight, so I took this money, then uh, I wrapped this money on them and, write, and wrote on the, on, on the paper the figure. So I took about eight, um, eight sheets of paper from my notepad. So I wrote number one, number two, number three. Then stuck them in, onto their trousers. But, but, but these people... You said uh, you found them only in their undergarments. How did they have pockets? Not all of them were on the, I mean, on garments. Because they were, they, they had their trousers. Either one or two were in on underwear garments. So when that happened, council, I went outside. So we put the bodies inside the, the chambers. Then I went outside. I took my telephone. I called the IG. I said, sir, so that was between 7.30 to 8 o'clock because it was getting late. I said, sir, we have already arrived in the mutuary. We have put these bodies inside the chambers. But I have found some foreign currencies on them. Before I finish, he hung up the phone. Why do you think he hung up the phone? Because he doesn't want to listen to what I was saying. That's my belief. He was uninterested. Yes, he was uninterested. uninterested. So, whilst I was standing there, Lamin Cham came, Lamin Cham Futatanang, the journalist from the Daily Observer. He knew me because I used to be the police spokesperson sometimes some years back. So we had that relationship. Though so he just wanted an interview. Then he said to me, CMC, uh, what do you think about this? So I responded and said, well, this is a foul play and we will investigate this matter. And anyone found responsible will be held accountable. That was the statement I made as the chief investigator. And I was also speaking on the name of the IGP and the Gambia Police Force. Or oh, oh, you thought you were doing that? I thought I was doing that. Because I was virtually number three, if you, if you like. Because CMC, you know, 
ni ajube ntelemu me nyatonka sabanjangoti police la bundala katu ni ajube utumo CMC palaso the administration mararo bundala karola i the report to the IG or to the DIG ka nteka kibaro nteni menka choki wala mka diamu police la nyatonko no lankole wala police kuntonko fango so i was confident of what i was saying andun wotembo lata la le mbem fo kan ngani njikole fo so we all dispersed be janjanta lamin cham did he take photos lamin cham fo e data lol taleba not at the mutuary i'm not even at the, i'm not sure whether he did at the, at, the, at, the, at the crime scene malla fo ayake furewlu tartadami wulo kono bara make fure bumoto because at the crime scene at one point i left that place and went on the highway tatu furewlu ngi tartadami ngwati soton tan te boto wulo kono len tata lo silabaka yes control proceed so council after that council bureau botala the mutuary was locked ya fure bumu sorong i left home i left home boto jen saita su i was traumatized akatante kijaboleti i was confused akatanye jakaloti i don't know what to do malum be munekela on arrival at home rium fulata su it was very uneasy uh, among sono yam fe then i remember one of my boss uh, called babu karso ngakilo bata nanya ton kolo kilimbi je ka fo me babu karso mi sono babu karso mi sono babu karso because i handed over admin to him atu maralo bunda ngaw ci ka ngaw dia telela so he called me i am kumandi so me pajalo konye pajalo this is a very tough case ni muku kolembale ti de and this case will prove who you are adu nyin nyin ko nyele ba ay tandi la etalom jumaati so he gave me some kind of encouragement le tunga munta ay kumolu fonye men sim fanan juso bendi pour que dikif de lata pour que bula nyin ko no ma han fo dandu lato babakar was my boss babakar munta la nyaton kole i said sir we will do everything possible ngaye sa mben na kato dango be kela le fem fem se keno to get the, those responsible to justice pour men nyin baro ke ngay londi lua nyati lingo okay the following day uh, sunday bitu asamo men kata dimasi lumoti there was no activity ko manke wolum so on monday morning bitu tene lungo somanda it was the daily observers uh, front page lead story wolun nen observa kibar kayto la lera folo ala nyati li nya nyina keta kibar folo ti men safeta je it quoted me ay entela kuma kangalu fintindi jele asen on tele nga foko police cmc police on la cmc ko um, that uh, the dead bodies found at um, i can't actually remember the exact wordings ay kuma kanga kalimo lu menu safen hakilo ma wolu be muta bara nyina foko ye fure wolu menu tara mane bantala but he promised to investigate this thing to the latter ay la hido tale de kabe nyin ko kisi kisi la le han fo bandula to and anybody found responsible will be accountable andu itata tara ko momo din la baro mu nyinti ibe londu la loi nyati ngula that was the observers front page story observa kibar kayto la lera nyaton ka kibaro keta woleti and they also quoted like i say is foul play because i was so much used to that and you yen nak kuma kama fanan sen kanje katu ndelta wofla le ka foko ni mutti limbali yaleti so when that happened biro keta i call my commanders nanna nyaton ko lu commande commandalu a cmc wa rin telom cmc ti wotumo you are responsible for serious crime and we tell marta ni ku jaw ku ku jawolo ni ku jaw balula you are responsible for fraud and we tapale ya kulu fanalo e betele koto major crime and ni ku jaw nyaton ka balu and interpol and ni banku ni banku tema police bunda so i call all the commanders ngawo nyaton ko lu bekli and then brief them I said to them this is what happened during the weekend. Na ko boye nyoto ko ye nyina keta ni lokum bandu la to botam en kono. So I would like you to go to Burfoot. O to mbela fila al fanal yeta Burfoot on a fact finding mission. Al yeta ku kisi kisi la je pour ali salo mu en keta. And then you report back. Ali muruna ngal yana la kibaro lu futandima. So the commanders I remembered one of them was uh, Tumani Sanyang. Tu o nyato ko lu kilimbe ko no hakilo ya muta ko to Tumani Sanyang neti. He was uh, uh, he was an ASP at the time. O tembo ASP le moati. I remember to uh, Malamin Sise nakilo bulata Malamin Sise fananna think he was an inspector at the time so he was crime nga mera utumo mu inspector leti ku jaw ku jawolu no masata bunda I remember also Keita inspector Keita he was also a very veteran investigator nakilo bulata Keita fananna inspector Keita te fanam mu kis kisir la meri ngoleti so they all left for Burfoot be bota je tata Burfoot but before that on Sunday did you speak to the IGP bari jandi wo wote ne odi masi dumala fo idi amra police wala nyaato no council i did not speak to the igp any council ning igp mandiam so on that monday bitu tenelungu 
after dispatching my 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 senior officers on a fact finding mission i called the ig i said ig sir i have already dispatched my commanders go to burfoot on a fact finding mission before i finish he hung up the phone I uh, Mr. Jalo, I am looking at your statement here. Mr. Jalo, I am suffering from the And uh, uh, when you spoke to the IGP on Saturday, on Saturday, um, you told him that you were coming from the mortuary. Did you tell him anything else that you were going to do? With regards to the public? Yeah. That was on Monday. Okay. On the same day. On, on right. Monday. Okay, proceed. So when I, I called the IG, I told him, sir, I told him, sir, I have dispatched my commander, senior commanders. To go to Burford on a fact finding mission. Before I finish, he hung up the phone. I telephoned So I was kind of confused yet again. Did you at any point in time tell him that you were going to issue a press release? Yes. After he hung up the phone on my on, on me again. After ten minutes, I insisted on call him again. I said, sir. I think we should write a press statement. Because when I was in the administration, I used to do most of these press statements. When I said that, he hung up the phone again. Did he say yes or no? He did not respond. He hung up the phone. Because Did you sense at that stage that he was happy with your activities? Definitely not cancel. Honey, cancel or tembo. So when he say, when Did he, he see you as a solution or as a problem? He saw me as a big problem. Because I also had no iota of of anything of like of any information that you know he knew something about the whole thing i didn't know are you suggesting mr jalo that his responses to you suggested that he saw you as as somebody who was going into something that need not or should not be gotten into. That's very correct, Council. The IG never wanted me to go deep into the investigations. But he was not telling me to stop. So I was also going ahead. So, Council, when uh, he hung up the phone, when I suggested that we should make a press statement, he hung up. Then immediately, I had a file on my table. This, uh, this was a particular file that I, ha I, ha I had interest in. Because there was a correspondent from the Spanish embassy to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs addressed to the, minister, to the Ministry of the Interior, to the IGP. And that uh, when the correspondence came, it was indicating that there is a ship in the Gambian waters. And this ship is a cargo ship 
marchandise. It has come to discharge merchandise. But they are suspecting that it is waiting to carry illegal immigrants to Spain. But it is so then I was reading that file, that same correspondence. And I got that correspondence one week before this incident. When I got that, I minuted it to the officer in charge of Interpol. And he told me that officer in charge of Interpol. Can you investigate and report back? So Interpol went to the port. Interpol tata wa photo. They investigated about that ship. Uh, actually, I remembered uh, Numo Kujabi. Hakilo ya mutako mo ikafume ya Numo Kujabi. The late Numo Kujabi. Tala Numo Kujabi. He is always in peace. He was then an inspector. He was the one assigned to go to the port. To go and investigate about this ship. So Numokujabi came back. He reported that the port has uh, the ship has left the port two days earlier. So I was reading that correspondent. Trying to connect you know, the, 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 the dots. That's, these immigrants, we are not going by boat to Spain. But they were instead scheduled to travel on that boat. On that ship. On that ship. On that ship. On that ship. So as I was reading, uh, the deputy IG knocked at my office. Because he's from Yumi. I'm from Jara. We have a joking relationship. So when he knocked, he opened immediately. When I saw him, I complimented him. I said, My elder. My elder. She said, Nadinding. He said, my younger one. I said, how is it? I'm in Mandinka. Uh, how, how is it in Mandinka? He said, Amankatiku. He said, uh, things didn't go rightly. Didn't go right. He said, Amankatiku. Things didn't break at the right point. I, I said, what happened? He said, you are transferred with immediate effect. <laughs> so, did he tell you who transferred you? I have He didn't tell me, but of course, it's the IGP. Because uh, he is part of the senior management. The IG has the right to redeploy and you know transfer people at his will. So, and according to procedures, wouldn't he be the only person who could transfer you? Yes. Yes, correct. Proceed. So when that happened, I just uh, took a piece of paper. Then I had the, the handing over, I took over from the former CMC. So I started to prepare my hand over. So I told the deputy, who is taking over from me? He said, Jatabalde. Commissioner Jatabalde. He is late now. May he soul rest in peace. Uh, did they tell you why you were being transferred? I did not ask. I complied. Did do you know, do you have reason to believe why you were transferred? Yes, Council. Ah, Council. 
Tell the commission. Yeah, Before because uh, I thought it was the matter that I'm investigating they didn't like. That's, that's why they transferred me. So I complied. Nsonta. I prepared my hand in over notes. Very quickly. Very quickly. By the time I finish, my commanders has come back from Burfoot. So they wanted to report to me. I said to them, well, unfortunately, I've been transferred with immediate effects. the same what happened? I said, I don't know. I don't know. Malong. In fact, I told one of them, let them take me to the police ban. I would do the work. I will tell the director Mbaijub because we, we used to tease him. Give me the big drum. And anytime there is a parade, I will hit it, everybody will hear it. So I told the officers, they were dejected. They were disappointed. They were confused. They said, no way. Oh, it's fine now. So I took my hand in over note. I took my personal belongings from the office. Then I climbed, went to the DIG's office. I gave him my hand in over note. And I had handed over the office key. Na office chabo fanandiala. This was around one to two o'clock. Ye mutalang kiling kata talang fula wato leti. I had no office immediately. Tembo office tembo lumbelo ko kela dami. Did they tell you where you were transferred to? Yeah, for ina bang yesa undi dingira ju malto ba. Yes, council. Ah, council. Um, the DIG told me DIG police kundongo no lang ko e nina fanye. That uh, I'll be taken over as commissioner for traffic. In view of the experience and training you had, was the traffic section the best place where your talents could have possibly been better used? Ita ame London menzoro. Kie samba kakatara mara lin trafiko Kenya la. Foye London ni karamu menzoro. Ita ame raila uko London ni karamu ni trafiko ro lin dingirad me alonko esi la London tamani no walto ba. Absolutely not. Honey, honey, council. Have you, in fact, ever worked at traffic? Never counseled before that. Except what I read during training. I have never commanded the traffic. traffic So he said I should take over traffic. What, what do you think was happening here? Well, Council, at that moment, I feel it was a conspiracy against me. That uh, perhaps um, they could even have gone beyond transferring me. And immediately I was expecting a shock. But it didn't happen immediately. But I man ke not there. And it never happened actually. And do I man ke fanang? So then I called the commissioner for traffic. Commissioner member for the traffic or langa ukumandi. They call him Commissioner Jamie Conta. Kafai Commissioner Jamie Conta. I called him. Na ukumandi. He's my superior. Adu ngate muna nyato ngalti watumu. I say sir. Ngai sir. I'm taking over from you. Sir, in the intelligence of the palace hotel. He said yes. They told me. Ako ha ya fanya ne. But tomorrow I will come to hand over. It was not 4 o'clock. I cannot go home. I was loitering within the building. I had no office. So sub 4 o'clock, I jumped into my car and went home. The next day was Tuesday. So contact him and hand it over to me the, uh, the responsibility for, of Commissioner for Traffic. But at this stage, where was the office for Commissioner of Traffic located? Commissioner of Traffic Kenya. 
Council, the office of the Commissioner for Traffic then used to be at the police headquarters at the last floor. Kumu komisiona me marcha trafiko la la ofisio katara police korda ba ni nuto bari abe bunjango la sapala ba ni nuto. That was in Banjul. That was in Banjul. Abe ba ni nusu sate wale kolo. That's where the commissioner sits. Commissioner kasi jele. So I took over on Tuesday from Conta. Uton talata lungo lunga kulo ta Conta. So you were kicked upstairs. Munda ye ye dogu kabusando. I took over from Conta upstairs. So you were kicked upstairs. Yes. <laughs> and then what happened after that? That was on, uh, on Tuesday and Wednesday. I was in my office. In office. Quiet. Everyone, I was quiet in my office, just sitting down. The DIG called me. DIG When he called me on the intercom. I said, good afternoon, sir. Maybe I said, Nakeba. I said to him, my elder, said, Abenyadi, uh, how, how are things? He said, Amankatiku. He said, uh, well, things didn't go the right way. I said, what happened? He said, they say you should leave headquarters. Because he headquarters, police la corda bato. With immediate effect. Abo sign, sign, sign. And go to Kairaba police. Peter Kairaba police. So he said to me, Akonyenko. All the MTO, that is the motor traffic officer, who provide you a transport, you take all the furniture, you go and sit at Kairaba police. Was this normal? It was not normal, Kansul. Would you, what would you say they were now trying to do? They were trying to kick me out of the police force. So, were well, they not also trying to create a distance between you and the in actual investigations that was happening? Absolutely, Council. You don't want me to have anything to do with that investigation. Mm -hmm. Proceed. So I call the MTO. I said, I said to him, can you send me a transport? I should move to Kairaba police. He said, okay, tomorrow I'll send a transport. So he sent a transport. He sent in a transport. Then the officers came to help me out. Move the furniture. From the police headquarters. To on the truck. To Banyu, uh, to, to Kairaba. I hope you had an office to, to put them in. Yes, yes, Council. I, I, I had an office. Ah, Council, office of Where I was asked to sit. He was the officer in charge of CID's office. So I was given uh, that office to be commissioner for traffic. So whilst uh, we were doing that movement, transferring this furniture, um, visibly, the officers were emotional. They were demoralized. Others really broke down. I, I was sitting in Kairaba. Kairaba. Doing nothing. But uh, when you return to Kairaba, mm -hmm. did you see uh, those people you had interviewed before? Uh, Council, when I returned to Kairaba on that Wednesday, uh, uh, I, Wednesday I was moved. So that afternoon, when we transported the, um, the furniture, I went to the police station, the charge office. I did not find any of those people who were detained there during my time. 
I didn't see anybody. Neither did I find Lamin Tunkara. And I didn't ask. I just went to do the diary. That they were sent to mile two, something like that. That the detainees and Lamin Tunkara were sent to mile two. Because as a senior officer, I can inspect any police diary. I was sitting down in my office. Doing nothing. Headquarters will never consult me. Headquarters will so quiet there. In fact, there was a time. I remember the president of Cote d'Ivoire. Laurent Bagbo. Came on a visit to Gambia. And then I was never informed as commissioner for traffic. I just, I went, home, I went home and then came to Kairaba to go to the supermarket, one of the supermarkets there. I saw the police officer on route lining. I went up to traffic lights. I asked them what happened. They said we have a state visit. I said we have a state visit. They said Lauren Babo is coming to Gambia. And then asked commissioner for traffic. I should have been the person at the forefront providing route lining and security on the highway. I was in inform. You were sidelined. I was sidelined. Blindsided. Blindsided. Exactly. 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 And kept away from everything. From everything. And what was your crime? My crime was trying to be professional. Trying to be professional. Trying to be professional. Trying to investigate a heinous and barbaric crime. Perpetuated by our own people. Not us. By who? <laughs> Not us. By the security forces. Not us. By the security forces. In the name of who? In the name of His Excellency the President. Then. President How do you know that? Because. I know um, uh, on that particular day. During the festival Jamuri, if you like, um, I can see the president leaving after he was after he had a, he had a tete -a -tete with the chief of intelligence who was Daba Marino. Now the president of Awulta La Palaso to Abotaje bring an in Daba Marino diamuta. Abruptly he went. And then I, I don't see anybody among the security chiefs who has the daring mind, the audacity, the power to instruct for the uh, execution of these migrants rather than the president. No, the chief of defense staff. Sojaro Lakundon Kota, not the IGP, IGP Takela, not Director General of the NIA, and Director General NIA Takela, and nobody else. Adu Motakela, this is my opinion. Nina Muntela Gerot. From all you know, you had your ear on the ground. Did you see a serious investigation going on? Foya Jele Banko, Sobea, the Kerry, and the Kanyu Kuni Daka Kiskisi. Um, Council, you Kansul. see, um, when I left Kairaba, Kansul, when I left the headquarters at CMC, Brimbata headquarters, Kabo CMC Palasoto. Um, Jatabalde took over from me, the late Jatabalde. Dala Jatabalde Palasoto and Kasain Noto. Uh, I decided to keep away from these investigations. I don't want to know. I don't want to ask. Because, because um, I can even notice. Some senior officers were giving me distance. I was kind of isolated. But I was determined I will never give up. I sat in Kairaba. There was no investigation during my time. 
Is it clear that you are not to Prior to that, I was um, nominated as an investigator in Darfur. Darfur. Then uh, when the time comes, and I was at Kairaba, of course, I had an interview from DPKO. I was selected as one of the investigators. So during the interview, at the end of the day, do you know about it and the chairman also knows about it? I asked the panelist, when are you going to get me out of here? So they said to me, the right to a permanent mission. So you will write to your permanent mission. Okay, your permanent mission. So within a week, you wrote for the permanent mission. Offered me the job as an investigator. And I should go and pick a ticket from the DPKO. So, I mean, I went there, did that. I didn't go to the headquarters. To because UNDP or to DPKO? Uh, UNDP. UNDP in Tata Walto. In Banjul. Banjul. So I didn't go to the headquarters. Manta police coordinator today. Because there was a personal non grata for me. That to Jemu Dinkirati Mansol and Nadaming. So I did not go there. I went to collect my tickets. Then a date was scheduled for me to travel. So I had a service passport as a senior officer. So I, I may not need a visa to Sudan. But on arrival in Khartoum, when I saw the, sorry, on arrival in Addis Ababa, um, they checked my passport. There was no visa for Sudan. They refused to take me. But I would not board. Because at the time, I think the government of Sudan were definitely against the UN getting into Darfur. But the African Union were already there. African Union Then Basur, uh, President Basir, uh, President Basir, that no UN will ever enter or set foot in in, in, in Sudan in Darfur for that matter. And ICC. So I was refused. Um, um, to fly to Khartoum. Khartoum. So I was stranded in 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 in, in Nairobi. Oh, it was Nairobi, sir. Nairobi. Maranta Nairobi. Nairobi I was there for was two weeks on the in on the floor of the airport. I could not go. Mantano. So they said they would um, arrange. Kenya Airways said they will arrange a flight for me to Dakar, Banjul. I said never. I'm not going. So I stayed there. Virtually, I was just like an employee of Kenya Airways. I know all the flight schedules. All the flights that come in and out of um, Jomo Kenyatta Airport. And I started speaking to DPKO. So they wrote a note verbal yes, to allow me in. So when I got the note verbal, I went to Kenya Airways again. I gave it to them. They scheduled me for an other flight. I arrived in Khartoum. They said, no way. I'm not going in. I was deported. Back to Nairobi. I was in Nairobi. Nairobi. Almost three weeks. Then I informed the DPKO again that they have refused me entering. Because then definitely President Basir has vowed that no UN staff will ever enter. Did you, did you explore the chart route? Well, no, no, chart? no control. Yeah. I need so, but then, uh, uh, I received an order note verbal for uh, twice, I think, in, 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 a short, in a short day. Right, uh, address to the Sudanese Foreign Ministry. They should let me in. But now, the ticket. 
Ticket or Kuluntila Tabara. I don't have a ticket. Ticket Tambulu. I don't want to come to Gambia again. And Dumala for Cameroon and Gambia Koteke. I call the, the Gambians in Sudan. Na Gambian call Kumandi Menub Sudan. They contribute among themselves. Yakodo Fayin Yokang. Led by Tatin Baji. May along Kotatin Baji Nyaton Kaya. Because he had already left at the time. That was Tumwa Abotale Fokapare Jambule. They, con they contributed. Yakodo Kafunyoma. Bought me a ticket. A ticket or Sanye. Then I flew to Khartoum. Data Hartum Tene. And then after I got my visa to Darfur. And what to Molen Nat and a visa sort of Kata Dafo. You can get a Sudanese visa. Uh, Sudan, la visa soto no nyam, we also need a visa for Darfur. For your visa, you need to find member for Darfur. I think you know about that. Council na mirete fango yolone. So that is how I got into Darfur. Mfuta ta Darfur ten ndun ta yeteni. As an investigator. Kata nkonte mu kiski sirlalti. What precipitated that was a report by some NGOs. Yes. Explaining about what happened in Darfur. In Darfur. And then the Sudanese government put a blanket cover over there for no UN staff, no ICC staff would enter there because I had submitted an application for warrant of arrest against the Sudanese foreign minister at the time, mm -hmm. Ahmed Harun and Ali Kushi. But uh, uh, yes, so you went to Darfur and after that you, you went to the United Kingdom. Yes, in fact, uh, before that, before that, before that, United Kingdom before that council, council Janio Bekela, I worked in Darfur as uh, an investigator. And after I was assigned as the um, as the chief investigator of the ceasefire commission. But there was a ceasefire commission um, um, uh, created by the African Union. And I was the chief investigator. I was there until 2008. For 2008, Then I came back to Gambia. Then I requested. Then I should be transferred to the police training school. I don't want to go to. I don't want to go to the headquarters. Uh, did, they, did they, in fact, sanction your move to the UN? Did they give you the secondment that you needed? Yes, actually, actually, I to the UN. Ha, ha. So I went to the police training school. That a police karamoto. I was made deputy commandant. Yenke kuntongo no langkoti. I was there for almost eight eight months. Mbije karisai. And then the, the, then the, um, the United Nations peace support was created for Gambia police. And what more the United Nations la mako irubunda puru nyanta Cairo sembentu yala nyaming yau bunda londi Gambia police. With the support of the Swedish government. And what mako iro finance Sweden mansa kunda le bulo bakoto. So that office was created. Yau office of Londi. And headquartered at Cairo. And do between yau finance la korda ke Cairo police korda to. So the IG said. What what more IG ko. Then uh, Jesus was the IG Sabaji. Utumo Jesus Sabaji atelom IGT. Decided that I should go and hurt it. Kontesita obunda nyatonkaya. So I I was there. Mbijele as head of the peace support center. Me alongkolem Cairo sembentu ya bunda ni na nyatonkoti. I was there 2008. Mbije kabirin 2008. 2009. Or 2009. 2010. Or 2010. I had an offer. Not a silado finance sort of bunda do yeleta from the UN, Abu UN, a special assistant to the police commissioner. Kurunga ke mako irlati and me main finance sim better la police commissioner kang because then the mission had already grown from African Union to a hybrid mission called Darfur. That was too much. Who sembo waratla kono fanuta kabo makamo to me along ko wale Darfur la odo ko di kairi sabari ndi bunda saenga kono fanuta na taka bunda kono fanuri muti me along ko bunda jamal le bulo bakoto. Because of my experience in Darfur, that unga londo menso to Darfur, I was one of the first few police officers from the UN side. Teleketa police nyarunga follow dantango luti menu bata UN la karola. So when the new police commissioner arrived, green police commissioner kuto ni nata. You needed a a, a special assistant sulata mako irla la mensim better la te kan which was on a fixed term appointment me along ko be kala place sabatiri ngoleti so i got the the offer do ngaw do quota when i got the offer i try i don't want to go to the headquarters again biri ngaw soto mala fi ka muru headquarters kota ke because there was a png against me ka to je membe je wolem e mansulante la je so but finally bari abandulato i have to muster the courage 
I went to see the IGP. That IGP J. I saw him the letter of offer. Nani letter of tender la yemem yemem fonye. That was Jesus. Olem Jesus tino watu mo. And then um, he said, okay, we'll have to see the, the minister. Ako ha watu mbe minister jelele. Okay, so it took some few days. Until then, that I. But I insisted I must see the minister. But he hadn't been on camera yet. So who was he at the time? Uh, the minister was Usman Sonko. Oh, minister, mu at Usman Sonko leti watu mo. Because who declared you PNG at the police. It was well, Usman Sonko. Kamu di kavu koy mansuli laji. About Usman Sonko le koy mansuli na police kordato. So I was reluctant. Amunta manken fangola dianyakuti. Because I never saw Usman Sonko again until the day. When, when myself and Jesus went to the ministry, so Jesus asked me to wait outside. I said, no way. And I have already received my UNLP. So I went inside. Jesus, when I followed him, so he said to the minister, well, Pajala has gotten a job with the UN. So he's requesting for a second man. That was the first time I saw Usman Sonko for quite a while. And immediately, he gave the green light. He said, Jesus, why do you have to keep him? Let him go. So Jesus said, okay, no problem. Jesus go, uh, what a cool so we went back to the headquarters. It was after 4 o'clock. I used to be the commissioner for admin. So I drafted the, you know, the request for me you know, to be seconded to the UN. So he signed, he signed it. And the following day, it was sent to the PMO. Because I was really um, uncomfortable. Um, I have been going to the, I went to the PMO once, twice. Then my request was granted on second men. Yeah, but before that, I have some very close friends, actually. They asked me to watch my bag. Because there is a particular jungler who was, who was assigned to kill me. Who was that one? This jungler, I later came to know, is called Fantu Nyabali. So immediately I left. And after your stint in the in the uh, in the UN, in the UN. In Darfur, mm -hmm. you went to the UK for some further studies. Yes, Council actually Council Akatanyameng as an international staff. Usually, um, you you are entitled to what is called, I mean, RNR. Usually, rest and recuperation. So, but as an international staff, actually, it was always very lucrative, if you like, to visit your country. It was tough for me. Council, so I was there. Council Mbije. I was the um, special assistant. Ntelemu Nyatonko Nolankoti. With the police commissioner. Police Commissioner Bundala Karola. I think I worked with about four commissioners, police commissioners in that mission. Police Commissioner Nani Ledo Koke. 
one time there was no chief of staff what is it on the chief of staff man so to member kala kundon ko the chief of staff has left but mo mem chief of staff ti wo tatale i was appointed as acting chief of staff to na ta nyim place odin na nga pala chief of staff place odin mara i was doing both mba do ku flo bele ke kan but can come to gambia but mtina gambia why couldn't you mona ti na itina no council because of the threat council ka to silandir ko but finally bari abandulato i have to monster the courage fonga nyin jusota embakum nsetana when my mission ended in 2014 birin na do ko banda 2014 i was still not comfortable habari hanim bin mantara sewore jiso malla what you told me to watch my back moy nyim fanya ko ngang hakilo tun ko moto why do you think that kausu nyab fansu nyabali was detailed to kill you monat na iba fula kansu nyabali prat at fansu nyabali prat e set ke modi min be fal yeah because fansu nyabali i understand was a jungler ka du nga faham ko fansu nyabali mu jongla leti wotu mo i don't know him in person ma fangolonde but i have heard his name but nga to moy and the one who told me alu me nyim fonye was a former police officer o fam fanan ne keta police wolti nu he would not lie to me te fania fulanye so he won against that i am dandala but why do you think they would want you dead etefe muna ati ne be lefla procureur je yefa yeah because of the case that i was investigating ka tum be ko men kisi kisi kanu they didn't like it iman la fala that may be the reason asike wala mu daliloti there was the time i left in 2014 15 wala wa to tim bota yang 2014 kata 15 then i went to uk ndata united kingdom because of my academic dreams pour nga tan nakara ngoki je after i came back o kola la mun setana but while studying in the uk o wa to be kala ngola uk did you come up did you come across any gambians who had a connection with this west african migrants case you were investigating fo wa to ne be angal ter sato ko nonu inata na molo na miyal gambia dimole and i fell long nyin mol la quarter le ka fo west african migrant yes council ah council hello fanye in fact um while i was in uk ah wa to me be uk is a gambian guy gambia dimole mu he came from the same area in jara botama fankili na jara we were speaking on facebook be dia mo kanyo e facebook and he said to me commissioner akonye commissioner do you remember the day these ganians were killed fo e hakilo ya mutale lumme ye nyin ganian olu fa he said yes i can remember kai hang hakilo ya mutale he said to me you see when we saw you coming e akonye ko bring ye je iba kanang we were terrified aketanye kija teoti this officer was a member of the piu nyim police o tuma be do ko la police intervention unit piu he said to me we were so terrified when we saw you ko nyen ko ki silanta bringe ja kanna he said to me i said to him what what happened why do you why were you try for terrified ka muna keta muna e silandi nu he said because we just buried nine bodies before you arrived ka do nga fure kolonto le bade janite e futa when he told me bray nyim fanyi i said but where did you bury them ka ali nyilu bade min he said to me ko nyen you know the crime scene ya jele mo fanyi keta daming i said yes nkai ha he said to me after that immediately after the crime scene on the right hand side ko nyi ni tambita ko nyi keta daming buluba karola there is a baobab tree ye sita juba be lorinje hay ni baobab tree o sita juba koma we buried nine bodies there mo konon to bade jele he told me because he took part in the burial ay nyina fo nyi kado ata fango ma be taw bade rotole so when i came back biri muruta nang The next day, Asamo, I went to the scene. Ndata je, I went to the crime scene first. Mfolota ko keta dem mfamoto. And I walked um, to the um, to 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 where the alleged mass mass uh, grave. mass grave is. Bitum birimbata ko ke lula to ntama tan simu la kata e ko nyi moja ma bade o bedameng. That's how I know the place. Na din kira lontene. You saw it. Yeah, so yeah. I, I I saw the place. Na je je, but I cannot actually identify the spot. Bare nte dinkira nyim fanga tombo no la ko jangi. Where he told me? I dem am for nyeng. I'm sure maybe within 20 to 25 meters radius. Na mera ka bo meter mu an kata meter mu an ni lulu amurum murum nyin kono. It should be the mass grave should be there. Nyeng jama kaburo better la ji. When did you return? What did you want to murunta? 2014 to end to no 2018. 2018 lo muruta na. Yes, consul.
Thank you very much, Mr. Witness. I have no further questions. Thank you very much, Emma Council, and thank you very much, uh, Mr. Jallo, for your testimony. And thank you for a tremendous service, Emma, to the United Nations. Notwithstanding the difficulties that you were encountering in your home country, you uh, sacrificed and uh, um, helped them, uh, the World Organization to carry out its mandate. A man, a mandate, in, a mandate inspired by the preamble to save succeeding generations from the scourge of war. And notwithstanding the difficulties at home, you were one of those um, uh, Gambian contingent um, uh, who serves um, the organization. And again, thank you very much indeed, Dama, for that service. Sorry, you had to endure difficulties in your home country. Uh, two quick, quick questions. Did the uh, DPK reimburse the Gambians who paid your ticket number from Khartoum to Darfur was the ticket reimbursed from, from Nairobi. From, from, from Nairobi. From, from Nairobi. 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 Yeah. Mr. Chairman, the ticket was never. It was kind of a welfare. Amanda Chairman, I'm not going to say anything. For in ata buluma sayo kile Gambia dingulu la meni alonko wale kolo kensum purke la ticket ojo kabon Nairobi kana tata nunda men Darfur. Bari sedo ko hani ma ko yiro lon ya ke wole kan doron e ye bulo fanyo kan ye tiketo nyinjo bari manne bulu masai no they should have been reimbursed um, if they um, get you to the duty station that obligation would be on dpk o that's correct nyante bulu masai la le dpk o nyanta bulu masai o kelale wayri wole akata an fo ye futandi tadulato the second question whatever happened to the eight bodies that were taken to the mortuary Mr. Chairman, the moment I did my hand in over, Mr. Chairman, I didn't know anything that happened to those bodies again. But there was a PNG against me. I went to Kairaba Police and sat down there. I don't know what happened to those bodies. Thank you very much indeed. In has, yeah, if you have any questions, um, uh, Imam Jalo, you have the floor, please. Imam Jalo, welcome to Ninka. Thank you, Chair. Chair Baraka. It is very sad what happened to you. I mean, get a new nuclear water bucket. We are doing service to your country and to your people. If you do go to the police, the bank will not let you do your mall. Will put you on such pressure that you are almost crying right in front of us now after many years. My question now is Are these people still in service who were your buses? Thank uh, you very much, uh, Commissioner Jalo. Commissioner Jalo. Um, during those times, uh, the IGP was Usman Sonko. Um, he was subsequently appointed as Minister of Interior. And uh, after I understand, he fell out with the then president. Then he fled the country. 
He was my direct supervisor. Atela muntela ya marlati nungo tumo. Um, the deputy IG at the time. Watembo mensi me IG kang. Was uh, Abunjai. Watumo weka fole Abunjai. Uh, he was also kind of frustrated. Wofana na ataka jikila teoti yala duko wato. He was, he, he also resigned from the police force. Afana na ata duko nyimbula le kabo police. So they are no longer there actually. Wolo mantara jesaing. Yes, uh, Commissioner Jalo sir. Ha, ketata na Commissioner Jalo. Just a point, uh, except for Esa Baji Jesus. Yes, Esa Baji. Uh, who, who, yes. who became IGP. Who became IGP. Well, after all these events. Yes, yes. And is, is still serving. Still serving, yes. And But he was not connected with the immediate period after, after exactly. the events. After, ah, exactly. Thank you, uh, Imam C. Baraka, Imam C. Pa Amadou Jallo. Amadou Jallo. Amadou Jallo. Anana Pular. Ako foye fula kama moyele. Hmm? Yes, Nerazan. Akai do mandi moyele. He said he can speak fula. Komi minam do tomak woye pular tulu mami do minam lade. What I want to tell you, I want to tell you that in fula. I am praying for you because of the um, difficulties that you went through. The day you went to Burford to look at those corpses, and they the born the way they died, the horrible way they were killed. You spent the whole day from morning to uh, evening. You were doing this job, loading corpses into vehicles and taking them to the mortuary. And after that, you went to your home. How did you feel during that night? Imam Sayyidaram. Thank you, Imam. And the Nyande Imam 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 C. That day, uh, that day in uh, we are talking about Imam Midana C. Have it. I cannot sleep throughout the night till Midana the day. Midana I didn't even uh, sleep throughout the night. Hey. Yes. It was really hard for me. I cannot sleep. My second question. The death. Where all the dead people you saw, and you know that this was done by people. And uh, you wanted to stand to follow it up until to reveal those who were responsible for committing such heinous crimes. They decided to remove you immediately from that job. How did you see yourself? Uh, uh, with th these things happening. And the Imam, why not Lua 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 Alano do in the lady? Imam, how I can describe the situation at that time? There was no law in this country. Because Mimi Wadano Haidara, Mimi Lugoto Notan? Because I didn't commit any crime. I was just doing my work. Mimi Wadano Haidara. I didn't do anything wrong. What I wanted to do is to follow it up and know who were who committed this crime. That's all what I was doing. Thank you, Imam. Thank you, Imam. No further um, questions. I'm just one last one. The 50 some uh, individuals, some who were killed, 50 plus. Individuals who were killed. Was it on the eight bodies um, uh, alone that you had seen, or have you seen more bodies um, uh, during that period? Mr. Chairman, I only saw the eight bodies Mr. that were found Chairman. in the forest uh, in Burford. Because when they were being transported from Bara, 
Um, I'm sure the deputy IG must have tried to reach me. Na long deputy IG wala IG no lango aya katale numpuru kam futante mawa langa nyomo i. But he couldn't. But he amanso to no. So I don't see the life bodies actually when they have been transported. I only saw the corpses at the end of the day. Buto me baluri ngoje ibe baluri tu me namma oje nge frewol duro neje bring koyin keta fuka pare. Did you get to know the nationalities of the eight individuals? For morning yalo ne borta banko minkam ban kili wa kili me. Uh, actually, um, those I found at the at the crime scene, the already dead people. Yeah. I already assumed they may be Ghanaians. Because those I left at the Kairaba police station before departing were all Ghanaians. So I, I assume those dead bodies were also Ghanaians. Sir. All of them. All of them. Yeah. 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 That's good. If you have any concluding remarks to make, um, uh, Mr. Jalo, you may please proceed to do so now. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. In Mr. Chairman. In fact, I have very little to say. All that I want to say is that that there should be justice. Ko before reconciliation. And I still maintain my stance on my statement that I made to the press that those responsible for this heinous crime must be held accountable because there cannot be just uh, peace without justice. Because these killings were very unnecessary. They were very unnecessary. And would you call it uh, an intelligence failure? Andu aseke fomo sa fono ko amunta kulo kibaro le boita manke no anyama. I said no. Ningo le munte ba flahani. Because it my evidence. Katunte la sede aroto. I said that. Nani mfoko? There was a correspondence. Nyomo yo ketale. From the Spanish government. Member ta Spain man sakunda la karoto. Informing the Gambian government. Puruka fo Gambia man sakunda eko. That there is a ship in the Gambian waters. Kulungo be Gambia la baji olukono. That ship is allegedly waiting to transport some migrant to to. To, to Spain. But so therefore, I do not see this as an intelligence failure. It was callous. It was treacherous. It was heinous. To kill people. Just for coming to your country. And the tools are there to investigate. Why do you have to kill them? Why do you have to kill them? So this is my short statement, Mr. Chairman. And thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. Thank you very much, um, uh, Mr. Jallo. Um, uh, on Thursday, I did remind um, the Commission here that one of the principal um, items in our mandate is to create um, a historical record of um, uh, what happened during that 22-year um, period. In order to, among other things, to address impunity, we are not oblivious of that um, mandate. But thank you again very much indeed, uh, Mr. Jallo, for coming to testify before the Commission. We will now take a lunch break and then come back at uh, 3 o'clock sharp. Meeting is adjourned.